I'm meeting up with Seth and Andrew from eridelife.com and they're going to talk about jumping and the art of jumping on an EUC. So let's go. What's up guys? Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Andrew is my scooter guru and then we've got Seth. He's the EUC expert. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, Jimmy. <laughs> aspiring expert, I would say. You see aspiring expert. I got my first wheel less than a year ago. I came from the one wheel kind of uh, scene. And you know, some of the reasons why I chose to go to EUC was because I was missing the, the air, the speed. Uh, one wheel is great, but it's amazing what kind of world opens up to you when you start on the EUC, you know, as far as the off-road terrain that you can tackle, the skate ramps, you know, the jumps. It's, it's really, a, it really opened my eyes. Some people like to ride trails, some people like to ride fast, some people like to jump and do stunts, and Seth's one of those guys. Want to see me send it like Seth? Then give this video a like. If this video gets 500 thumbs ups before my next video publishes, I'll try to send it like Seth and maybe my next video will be from the ER. I just want to learn more about the, the evolution of jumping, the history of jumping, and some of the components that we use. Since UCs were probably invented, people were bunny hopping them and trying to jump them and things like that. What I wanted to talk to you guys about were some of the considerations that you should take when you're considering jumping your EUC. Not every EUC is designed to jump. Actually, no EUC is designed to jump, so we have to take some precautions. There's some things that you're going to want to do to prepare if you're going to start jumping your EUC. There's some things that you're going to want to consider buying or preparing perhaps making if you're gonna jump your EUC. EUCs were not designed to be jumped, but uh, they can be jumped, some of them at least, and uh, some of them require a little bit of a DIY, and there are products on the market that you can buy to help you with the jumping. We're putting together a network of people that like to design products for EUCs and people that like to print products for EUCs or actually any PUV, PEV for that matter. So if you go to our website, eridelife.com, you can sign up to become a designer and submit your designs. Other people can either download or print those designs. You can offer them for free or for sale. I hear there's a giveaway of some sort. Yeah, we'll actually be giving you more details at the end of the video. Let's get started. What do we have here? Since these things weren't designed to jump, you know, a really good idea would be to open up your EUC, make sure that everything is connected properly, make sure there's no loose screws. I mean, the last thing you'd want to have happen is to go off a jump and have a screw fly off and, and short your motherboard or something like that. Some of the bad things that can happen if you decide to jump your EUC, <laughs> for one thing, you can break pedals. Um, so this is a broken pedal. This happened actually at the skate park to me. Um, this is the stock pedal, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and upgraded to a uh, Hextech type pedal. These little studs on top provide you with a lot of uh, grip to the wheel as well, so that as you're landing and your foot is sliding forward, it's not going to slide forward and off the pedal. Another consideration, these are actually uh, titanium pedal rods. So another problem that can happen sometimes is, you know, this pedal rod goes through and you know, attaches to your EUC. So when you're jumping, if you just use their stock pedal rods, when you're jumping, that can bend. These pedal rods, they can be a real pain in the neck to get out if you bend them. Actually, a friend of mine, he uh, he bent his and, and he tried to tap it out with a hammer and ended up loosening some things on the controller, turned on the wheel and it kind of burnt, burnt up. So you wanna be really careful if you do have a stuck pedal rod like this. If you're going to be jumping on an MSX or MSP, kind of the older Gotway models, um, is that the axle nut will become loose. This also happens if you go down a lot of stairs, for instance, as well. And so your wheel will start to get kind of sloppy. As you go back and forth, you'll hear kind of a knocking sound. That means that it's time to take it apart and tighten up that axle. And these are shims that actually go inside of your MSX or MSP, and they help tighten that so that when you, as you're tightening that axle nut, it keeps everything nice and tight and that you don't have that sloppiness down the road. Let's continue this, this lesson on jumping 101 on the EUC. When you're jumping on your EUC, it really makes sense to have something to kind of help you grab onto the wheels. You can see here, this is my gotway, and it's got these jump pads that uh, Law helped me set up when I was uh, out in Vegas. The first thing we'll talk about is the Coogee pad. This is one that you can make at home. Super easy to make. Um, these are actually made out of yoga blocks. Uh, so you can get these at Target or Walmart or just about anywhere. It's about five bucks for a great big block of this stuff. What's nice about it is that you can 
carve it into any position that you want. You can carve it into any kind of um, any kind of shape that you like. So this is like the Kuji style pad. You could also do like a wedge, a wedge style. When you're gonna go to apply this to your wheel, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put your foot onto the pedal. Then you kind of put this at an angle to the wheel arrange it where you're going to want it and then fold it against the wheel to seal the the velcro so that as you're going you'll notice that it kind of helps keep your foot attached to the wheel and down on the pedal so when you jump you can kind of lift the wheel with your shoe and it will kind of go along with you the other thing that this helps with is that when you land the jump your foot won't slide as far forward it'll kind of give it something to to grab onto because you know, the sides of these wheels are typically pretty slick. If you know somebody with a 3D printer, fellow out of Italy produced these, you just Velcro them on, and then you can kind of position them in different places. These are called winglets. Um, they're also known as jump hooks, and you can see why. Kind of there's this hook here that your foot fits into. And as you can see, what happens with this is it really kind of grabs onto your foot. It goes over the arch of your foot, and it really gives you something to kind of grab onto. And then we get into what's kind of the newest, the newest player on the block, and that's the Clark pads. What's really nice about the Clark pads is they serve a few different purposes for you. So as you notice, they kind of have the hook like some of the other pads do. But they also have a heel hook. So this hooks onto your heel. The other thing that this provides is it provides this kind of a, a what I would consider a power pad. So this is something that your, your shin can push against as you're pushing the wheel and you can torque it back and forth as well as braking. So these actually are act as levers when you're when you're riding your wheel so that you have a lever for more um, torque and you have a lever for more braking. They do come with a 3M adhesive and you can go ahead and just peel that, put that right onto your wheel. Um, I actually like to use Velcro for these because once again, you'd like it's nice to be able to readjust them. Seth, why don't you show us your wheel and what you've done to your wheel? So this is my 84 volt MSX. <laughs> it's um, soon to be replaced with an RS, uh, which is on order. The titanium pedal rods. These are the Hextech pedals. I've got my um, Clark pads installed here with Velcro. You'll see I have Velcro all over the place so that depending on my mood, I can you know put a different type of pad on there. I don't always have to stick with one type of pad. I do have a 3D printed bumper on here. This is good for when you bail. A tactical handle that we have available on E-Ride Life. This is for mounting things like cameras and, and it also helps to keep your MSX from splitting apart. And then a bumper on the rear is also highly advisable because typically when you do fall, when you're doing jumps, you're gonna have that wheel is gonna go, you know, somersaulting down the mountain, kind of bouncing as it's going. And so having the, the handle protection and the bumpers is, is really handy. And you'll notice here, this is uh, available at your local Ace Hardware, a dryer vent bracket. This actually helps the MSX in particular um, from splitting apart. Most of the newer wheels don't have that problem. We talked a little bit about the protection that you're gonna wanna have on your EUC. Some of the protection that I like to wear as far as jumping is I do have a chest protector. It also has a back plate, good set of gloves with a good wrist protection um, both ways. So having wrist protection on the back and on the front, full face helmet, knee pads, shin pads, elbow pads. You may have noticed when you start out on EUCs, all the hair just immediately gets rubbed off on the insides of your legs. So what I like to wear, these are actually nice snowboarding socks. They go way up your calf. They protect you. Um, you'll see that this is nice and frayed. That's from, you know, just the rubbing on the wheel. So having a nice set of thick socks is gonna really save you when you start riding with things like pads and doing more of these advanced maneuvers on your wheel. What kind of things are you jumping off these days? I really like going to BMX parks and jumping off of the jumps there. Um, skate parks, skate ramps. Um, we actually just built this kicker ramp not too long ago. You could put one of these together for less than $100. Even a two by four, you know, those of you that are starting out and you're just learning how to jump, throw a two by four down in the middle of the road, roll up to it, and as you roll over it, just kind of feel the wheel kind of it naturally wants to bounce off of that two by four. So as you're bound, as the wheel is kind of bounding up from bouncing and rebounding from that two by four, just jump into the air. So that's the best way to start, you know, learning how to jump. That's considered a bonk. And that was the first thing that I did when I was learning how to jump. Let's see some of those jumps then. Look at this scooter boy. <laughs> Ranunagi. Woo! Right on time. Right We're about to do some jumping. Nice. You're, it's the new Unagi built for jumping? Oh, I don't think so, but we can try. <laughs> 
so as you can see, we got the uh, kicker set up here. I'm going to give you a couple tips. Just wait. if you do decide to hit a kicker like this, what you're going to want to do is as you're going off the jump, I mean, this really applies to any jump. Try to keep your feet as level as possible because if your feet go forward like this, your wheel's going to think that you're moving forward, you know, leaning forward. It's going to start spinning up the wheel. We call that wind up. You want to avoid wind up. Same thing's going to happen if you lean back. If you're leaning back when you go off the jump, it's going to begin turning in reverse. So when you hit the ground, your wheel's going to be going in reverse. Nice. You're going to fall. Nobody likes that. So try to keep your wheel as level as possible as you're going off the jump. That means that when you land on the ground, your wheel will be kind of either neutral or slightly moving forward. That's going to help you a lot with your landings. Oh, okay, yeah. And if you try to pop off the jump kind of ollie like you would on a skateboard, you're really going to kind of focus, shift that wheel forward or back. So you just want to allow the jump to just carry you off. You just kind of want to ride up it. You're just a, you're just a passenger on this, on this ride. Why don't we talk about this giveaway you're telling us about? Jason over at eWheels has graciously offered us a $500 gift card. Christopher Clark also generously donated us a set of Clark pads. So if you're interested in these Clark pads, we're going to be giving these away too. So go to our website for more details. It's eridelife.com. Whoa. Whoa. I need to do that a little bit more smoothly, I think. This next jump I want to dedicate to Merlin Fish, Mike Leahy, and Mitch Lustig. Thanks so much for you guys helping me out, all your advice, your late night talks. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't for you guys, so thanks a bunch. Wow, he makes it look so easy. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed something from this video. Hope you learned something from this video. History of jumping on an electric unicycle and uh, some tips on how to do it and the gear to wear, gear to put on your wheel while you do it, all right? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.